Hello, and welcome back to the Prentice Hall Biology Textbook. Today we will be covering Chapter 6, Humans in the Biosphere. Section 6-1, A Changing Landscape. So we have to think of Earth as an island, and that all the humans on Earth share a limited resource base and depend on it for their long-term survival. In this section, we, have to, we will learn about the energy flow, chemical cycling, climate, and population limiting factors. So there are the Earth on Earth. We there are numerous human activities, and humans we as humans we participate in food webs and chemical cycles. We depend on the ecological life support systems to provide breathable air, drinkable water, and fertile soil. So systems also provide services such as storage and the recycling of nutrients throughout the uh, different cycles to provide the nutrients back to us. So these are called ecosystem goods and services, and if we don't get them from the environment, we need to expend our own energy to get them. So there are three main human activities that affect the biosphere. Hunting and gathering, agriculture, in and industrial growth and urban development. So hunting and gathering makes relatively few demands on the environment. It's the very simple, there's the hunting of animals for their hides and meat, and then the gathering of berries and vegetables. And this is done in the simplest form of uh, acquiring nutrients for humans. Next, we have agriculture. So agriculture is the practice of farming, and it began about 11,000 years ago after the last ice age. The first farms consisted of rice, wheat, and potatoes, but soon expanded to include all sorts of animals. So uh, agriculture provides human societies with a fundamental need, a dependable food supply that can be produced in large quantity and stored for later. With the invention of agriculture, humans can now focus on more important things, such as the bettering of their tools and other aspects of their society. So, uh, one of the sections, from traditional to modern agriculture. With this, we see the invention of new tools and crops, such as the plow, and then the invention of uh, crops to different areas, the bringing of corn from South America all across the world. And then the... Um, uh, one of the greatest uh, new tools was the new large-scale aggregation, irrigation, excuse me. So this created huge fertile uh, um, land in areas that used to not be able to uh, be farmed, such as in the western United States. So um, this then creates a uh, monoculture. So monoculture is a single variety of crop planted year after year. And monoculture is actually bad for the soil that the uh, crop is planted on because with different soils you get different nutrient use so it will suck up a one type of crop will use all of one nutrients and then when you plant another type of crop it'll use a different uh, different nutrients allowing the other nutrients to be absorbed back into the soil but with monoculture all of the nutrients of one type are absorbed into the crops and aren't able to then be absorbed back into the soil so um, some more of the new uh, aspects of agriculture are, that are more recent are genetically modified crops, and this for allows for uh, more tolerant crops that can survive with less water, but are also bigger and, um, and can uh, grow faster. And then also chemical fertilizers to speed the growth of crops and to prevent uh, insects, well, and then with the use of pesticides can prevent insects from eating the crops. Then that those came under the Green Revolution. So that was the introduction of fertilizer and monoculture. And this greatly increased the food supply, but it had an adverse effect on the soil the crops were grown on. So the challenges for the future, this has created uh, ecological problems, including the growth of the insect population. With the huge amount of food being produced, we uh, the, uh, there's more food for insects to eat, so they are consuming more food, breeding more, and we're, having, we're seeing a larger population of insects. And then also finding water for irrigation. These uh, agricultural farms take up or use huge amounts of water, and finding all the fresh water can be difficult, especially during a drought. Next, we have the industrial growth and urban development. So, human society and its impact on the biosphere were transformed by the Industrial Revolution. We saw the use of uh, burning in uh, just massive amounts of fossil fuels to produce energy for the factories. 
And then also this uh, mass-produced farm technology. So we now started producing uh, tractors, different types of plows, different harvesters. And um, so during this, these cities and industrials and industries discarded waste from manufacturing, energy production, and other sources into the air, water, and soil. So during the Industrial Revolution, there was a huge increase in the amount of pollution. It was the first rise, uh, greatest rise in pollution. So then uh, urbanization. Urbanization was the movement of people from the countryside into the cities. So with more packed cities, more factories needed to open for more jobs for more people, increasing more pollution. And then there was the war economy. The war economy occurred after World War I, or occurred during World War I and World War II. And this was when um, the economy of the United States took off. We were able to sell crops, uh, weapons, anything we could to the Europeans uh, during the war. And so during this, we saw um, uh, farmers who would go, or not even farmers, we'd see businessmen go buy huge um, uh, huge uh, land, tracts of land, and then they'd convert it into a, uh, into a farming land. And then they would just mass produce on the uh, wheat to sell to... Um, Europe. However, this ruined the soil. The huge farming uh, dried up all the soil, took all the nutrients out of the soil, and this actually resulted in the Dust Bowl, which uh, caused many farmers to have to migrate to California and other western states. Okay, 6-2, renewable and non-renewable resources. So the first off is the, uh, to, when we talk about renewable and non-renewable sources, is the tragedy of the commons. So the tragedy of the commons was da back in England, the, all of the cattle uh, ate, they ate the grass in a large or uh, grassy enclosure, and this was called the commons. So uh, the people who, f who uh, let their uh, cattle graze there greatly benefited. They had free food for their cattle. However, th they kept on uh, letting their cattle graze there, and the cattle would reproduce, and there'd be more and more cows eating all of the grass. And it led to the pastures being completely picked clean with n nothing left of any grass for any of the cattle, which then resulted in a uh, the cattle dying off and the farmers losing a lot of their money. So we have to classify renewable and non-renewable resources. So renewable resources can regenerate if they are alive or can be replenished by biochemical cycles if they're non-living. And this doesn't mean they're unlimited. They still like they still have to be maintained and at a certain level. Like if you can't just cut down a forest and expect it to grow back naturally. When you cut down a forest, you have to plant trees to let it grow back. So a forest is technically a renewable resource, but with the help of uh, replanting. And then a non-renewable resource is one that cannot be replenished by natural processes. And this classification is done by context. So it's some th sometimes a uh, in the certain context, there, a renewable resource can be both renewable or non-renewable. Okay, and then these are kept up through sustainable development. And this is a way of using natural resources without depleting them, and, and it also provides for human needs without causing long-term environmental harm. So human activities can affect the quality and supply of renewable resources, such as land, forests, fisheries, air, and fresh water. So an example of a sustainable development is instead of using pesticides to keep uh, insects out of the crops, you can use insects that eat those insects to keep them off the crop. And this doesn't uh, cause any damage to the environment. And then there are five different uh, natural resources. There are more, but these are the five main ones. There's land, forest, fisheries, air, and freshwater. So land resources provide space for human communities and raw materials for the industry. So this is where we plant our farms, we, there are fo grow, forests grow, all that type of stuff. And it is a limited resource. So one of the most important aspects of the land resources is the fertile topsoil. And this is uh, what we grow our crops on. And then 
However, we must main, make sure to maintain the topsoil. Without maintaining it, we have soil erosion. So this is the removal of soil by wind and water, in which case we see uh, the Dust Bowl was soil erosion, erosion and then resulted in desertification, which is the changing of fertile land into desert. Okay. Next we have forest resources. So forest resources provide a great deal of things. They provide wood, oxygen, habitats and food for organisms, and then also help to moderate the climate, limit soil erosion, and protect freshwater supplies. So forests are both renewable and non-renewable. Old growth forests, ones that have never been logged, have been growing ever since they started, are non-renewable. We can no longer, if we were to chop those down, we would have to wait hundreds of years for them to finally grow up again. And then there are new growth forests, which have been at logged almost in entirely at least once in its history and these we can the trees are younger and we can we're able to cut them down and replant them um the deforestation of forests is just the complete loss of forests which results in soil erosion and prevents the regrowth of trees so once it a if a forest has been completely cut down and not replanted it has been deforested and then forest management is just the replanting of trees, controlled burns that will burn off the undergrowth, and let new trees grow. Next we have fishery resources. So fish, uh, fishing is the perfect example of a tragedy of the commons. Uh, in the early 70s, we saw the amount of fishing take off. There, we could not, the fish uh, repopulation could not repopulate fast enough to keep up with how much we were taking them out of the water. So the overfishing resulted in a system of sustainable development. We, the U.S. government, they are the U.S. National Marine Fishery Service uh, instituted aquaculture. So this is the raising of aquatic animals for human consumption. And here we can see a fish farm. So fish farms uh, are... It's just what it sounds like. It's fish grown up in farms too, and they only are bred for human consumption. Okay, next, we have air resources. So one of the biggest problems for uh, the U.S. and other countries is the preservation of air quality. And so the burning of fossil fuels that we use to provide energy result in pollutants and smog. And smog is a mixture of chemicals that occurs as a gray-brown haze in the atmosphere. And pollutants are harmful materials that can enter the biosphere through the land, air, or water. So the burning of fossil fuels also release, releases toxic chemicals and particulates. And particulates are microscopic particles of ash and dust. So nowadays, most industries use technology to control the emissions from their smokestacks. However, back during the Industrial Revolution, it was pumping smoke out into the atmosphere with no filters, and it was just, it was an insane amount of pollution going into the air. So the U.S. has greatly improved its air quality, but other countries has, have still have very poor air quality. China has uh, the worst air quality Ever. Most, of, uh, most of their readings are at the upper end of the chart, and some of them have even surpassed the chart, and we've needed to make new measurements so we can measure it. Um, and then, so, with when we have so many particulates, so, many, so much dust, air, and toxic chemicals in the air, we tend to see acid rain. So this happens when the... Uh, particles are in the air and it's they are absorbed into the water vapor and then it, which is then it when it rain when it rains it's brought back to earth so acid rain kills plant life pollutes rivers and streams and erodes stonework so many of the greatest sculptures of all time have been had to uh, had to be covered or brought into museums because acid rain was dissolving their features okay are one of our most important natural resources and one of our most easily polluted natural resource. Different chemicals, waste, and sewage can seep through the ground and pollute our fresh water or making it unusable. We're going to end it there. Sections 6-3 and 6-4 will be in the next video. Thank you very much.